Okay, so the plan for today is to play this daily rapid arena and play a different opening every game. And based on what people are saying on Twitch chat, I'll try and play some people's favorite openings. We might have a mix of dubious openings and solid openings and maybe some openings that I like as well. There's not too many openings that I dislike. Okay, first opponent. Ooh, I'm in the Berserk and I'll play E4. I'll play the Vienna. I don't usually play the Vienna, but it's a nice opening. I forgot to turn off Pentatonic too. Vienna Gambit time. Vienna Gambit accepted. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure white's already for choice after E5. I've encountered this a few times recently from the black side. This position, I like to play d5 because the best move. Uh, ooh, queen h4 is a threat. I was about to play d4 and just blunder this. So white should start with knight f3. And then d4 to follow. Yeah, black is painting the pawn, but at the same time, hampering development. Now here I could play knight d5. which I think I'll go for. That chases the queen back. It's the only way to save the queen and c7. Yeah, queen b4. Oh, no box queen. No mercy here. Yeah, Vienna Gambit, it's, uh, I think, pretty effective at beginner level, but it's also somewhat trendy at higher levels as well. So just focus on development. This will probably be a quick one. Hopefully I can win this pretty soon. This could be a threat. Then g6. Hmm. Oh wait, I just can take the pawn. <laughs> it took me a moment to spot that. I was fixated on the, on the check first. Okay, I'll take the rook. Black can triple fork, but then, yeah, I'm going to start targeting the, the king. Track is just too much fun. Ooh, maybe I'll get a Traxler today. Haven't played that in a while. Oh, this position is too much fun. I think it's mate next move. Yeah. King d8, there is bishop f6. Okay. Um, yeah, tough game for my opponent. Yeah, I think the mis the first mistake was taking here, just allowing e5. Uh, black should play this move. Maybe d6 is an alternative, but uh, then here, probably this is better to, um, to keep the bishop um, open and able to develop. So moving on, first game down. Oh, BCV says, uh, had that comment about the Traxler. Owen's defense. Yeah, some openings I haven't really played much of. Owen's. I played the Beach Cafe once. I don't think that will make an appearance today. Recommendation for the Pirates. Oh, from Duke of KTM, who played the Pirates against me yesterday. Remember that game? We had an interesting opening battle. Okay, let's play the Pirates. Not an opening I play too often, but um, it's a very easy opening to learn. Like usually you could just go for the setup and castle, uh, very similar to King's Indian. And there's a few different plans in the middle game. White's basically playing an Italian, which is, I guess, pretty solid. Uh, here I could play c5. I think I will play c5. And we're kind of transposing into a, a more closed Sicilian. But it's nice to control the d4 square. Have the bishop also helping out. This feels like a, also reverse English. Where the general plan is to expand on the queen side. Like Usually you want to play on the side your pawn chain is pointing towards. D4 
d4, okay. I mean, the natural move is to take, but b5 also looks kind of interesting because bishop d5, I take unleashing the bishop, winning a pawn. Let's go for b5. Yeah, welcome to all the people tuning in. This is the second game of the stream, second game of the tournament. And it's getting spicy. Opponent not moving the bishop, counterattacking the knight. If I take... And there's a lot of moves to consider. I could counter, counterattack this, but then this, and then this, and then white has three minor pieces hanging, all attacked by pawns. Um, yeah, sometimes these positions are tricky to calculate. I mean, if I take, take, and then take, I win a pawn. Bishop e3. If I take, 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 rook, take, 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 take. It's a lot of lines I'm up a pawn, but I have these weird double pawns on the C file. So I'm going to take a moment here to ponder. I should really analyze taking on d4 too. Take and then take. It's a difficult position to process. I'll temporarily be down a piece for two pawns, but white will have three minor pieces all attacked by pawns. I guess knight takes d4 is the most natural move there. Oh, but then I take, and if queen takes, I take here, unleashing the bishop, and then in the end I'll win this bishop. Oh, but there's queen d5 hitting the rook. But then I have bishop e6 attacking the queen, skewering, and defending. So this is, I mean, this is probably the most complicated move, but it also looks like the most exciting for me. Because if white takes back, then I just win two pawns. So take, take, take. If, I mean, white can't really desperado, because then still two minor pieces are attacked. Let's go for it. So this position, I mean... Three different minor pieces are attacked by pawns. White saves the bishop, but now I can take. And then after takes, I'll take. I'll be up two pawns. E7's defended. The knight's attacked. I have three center pawns here. Life is good. I will want to check after the game, like what would have happened in that other line. It looks like white missed the fact the queen was unleashed. L-I-G. Yeah, life is good. I should really make a a life is good emote. And D3. This pawn's pinned, so I can't take. Uh, there's also E4 here. Let's go for D3. Pass pawn. There's cases where this could be considered overextending, but... Usually, a pawn isn't weak if it's easy to defend. It's not easy for white to like attack so much. Maybe f5 coming. I still see, I still see people uh, expressing their favorite openings in chat, so um, we'll have some openings to choose from for the next game. Yeah, connect five. Maybe some connect six potential. I, mean, I could also, I could play this move. This, I also just win a pawn. Let's win a pawn. And then bishop d4 coming. Yeah, really spoiled for choice. Like there's probably a lot of ways to get the job done here. Oh, what do I want to do? F4 is a move. F4 traps a rook, actually. 
Yeah, let's go for it. Also unleashes a queen. E3 may be coming soon. Yeah, connect six is not happening, but yeah, one of these pawns is probably likely to promote at some point. Still have to be careful. White has pieces. Maybe trying to attack my king. But I also have pieces. Trying to attack white's king. I'll go for this. Simply attacking the queen. The queen's tied down to defending the knight, so this is probably most likely. And then probably rook f1 coming. Just making sure the back rank is covered. If takes, I mean, yeah, promoting to knight unfortunately isn't quite checkmate there because king h1. Getting closer. Hey, Bob is here. Gifting to Skates RL. Thank you, Bob is here. Okay, it feels very close to Force Mate. At the very least, I'll, I'll start with Bishop G1. White wants to do this move. Do I not have a a check? Greetings. My greetings. I'm actually a little bit perplexed here. It feels like I should have a check. Queen F seven. Knight F six. Wait a minute. Knight F six. I take. That's good enough. <laughs> Why am I struggling? I don't want to take and allow the fork. I think I'll play this. There's a funny line. If takes, I take back, promote to knight with checkmate. Please take my rook. I'll have to disable auto queen for that. I think I already got one Rosen trophy this game for the Connect 5. Promoting to Knight with Mate would be another trophy. But uh yeah, White doesn't doesn't go for that line. I I could take with Queen too when win back the Queen. Thank you. Thank you, Bromid. Appreciate the raid. Okay, let's take on Yeah, let's just take here. Keep it simple. Bishop takes all skewer. So I'm temporarily losing my queen. Shout out to Bromid. If you're just joining, I'm playing chess. This is the daily rapid arena. Second game of the stream. Trying to figure out how to checkmate. I'm still hoping for rook takes rook, after which I can promote to knight with mate. Bromid says, we love chess in the rhythm game scene. What's the rhythm game scene? Is that a different, is different type of game? Also, welcome back to Chessweeb. Do, oh, I'm sad. My opponent just resigns. I, I wish we, we would have seen this on the board. We'll see that on the analysis board. Take, knight. Yeah, checkmate. Okay. Fun game though. Um, opponent 
The opponent went for a crazy line that didn't quite work out. It could have gone crazy here. Like, this is a fun position to ponder. Engine. Oh, engine says white's better after bishop d5, which... I guess I, I didn't specifically look at this move. Yeah, saving the bishop, counterattacking, and... Oh, I could have been worse. Yeah, so taking was bad. I should have taken... Engine prefers taking the bishop, takes, and then takes. Yeah, this was the first one I was considering. I wasn't sure with my double pawns. Okay, back to tournament. Yeah, this is where, I think between games, this is where people will voice their favorite openings. Got uh, London. Hey, got another raid. Chess Dojo. Do we have the dojo command? Chess dojo? Need to make a chess dojo command. Shout out chess dojo live. Everyone should follow them. Great instructional content. Okay. A lot of the openings that people want, I can't really play because I'm black. I played the Pirates, which kind of went into a Sicilian last game. I'll play the French. On chess says French. Not too many other people say the French. Maybe not the most popular favorite opening among players. But very easy opening to learn. Like e6, d5. This is exchange variation. Which does have like a maybe more boring symmetrical reputation. But uh, there's definitely ways to make such a position spicy from early on. I'm starting with bishop d6 because there might be cases where I play this move. And I think I will play this. We're already making it a bit less symmetrical. This knight here, this knight here. One of the points of this is if the bishop comes to pin the knight, I can play f6. And the long term, at least uh, the medium term plan, I was going to say is to develop the bishop, queen, and castle, queen side. Here I have to be careful because white's threatening c5 to trap the bishop. So probably have to take here. And the move I want to play here is bishop g4, which looks nice on the surface. But I think the problem is bishop takes f7, take, and then knight g5, and white has the tactics. Meanwhile, I could play bishop f5, or I could just castle. Because castling queenside might just be a little bit too slow here. Yeah, let's castle. I mean, with this trade of d for c-pawn, the position is already transformed, where white now has isolated queen's pawn. So the goal for black is to play a bit more positionally. And knight c3. So now I can play bishop g4, apply some pressure, and this doesn't quite work. Hey, welcome back I to Ember. I got Umber. into contact with the developer of Chidoku. BB oh, made nice. suggestions to them and told them about your stream, but they were aware someone streamed it, uh -huh. but not who dot exactly. Uh -huh. Hope you're having a good day. Well, thanks for sharing, Emberg. I played Chidoku, Chidoku the other day. Chess plus Sudoku is a, a fun, fun little game. I got hooked for a few hours. If ninety, okay, so Queen D seven ninety five is what I'm trying to figure out. And then, I guess I can take, take, and then, wait a minute. I can also take, take, and then take, because if take, then take, and then take, and then take. 
The problem is after take, 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 there's take on b7. And that's really just a trade. Could play queen c8. Queen d7 seems like the most natural square, though. Queen d7, knight e5. I could take with bishop, actually. Bishop g4, queen d4. Queen d7, knight e5, take, take. And then I take on d1, trade the bishop, and then win the pawn. Yeah, so knight e5 probably can't be played. d5 could maybe be played. Okay, let's calculate. Queen d7, d5, knight b4. And I am threatening to take because of the bishop h2 tactic. And there's h3, bishop h5. Another idea is to play this right away, which looks kind of random, but the idea is to blockade the pawn and then play c6. I'm not so enthusiastic about any of the choices. Another idea is knight f5, pressure the pawn, which would probably provoke d5 and then this. Hmm. Actually, there's also queen d7, d5, and then take, take, and knight e5. Let's start with queen d7. I think it's the most flexible. Just trying to get the rooks connected and get the rooks to the center files. Yeah, I imagine um, the, the Chidoku website maybe got a bit more traffic than usual the other day. Okay, so 94. Yeah, white wants to grab the bishop here. So if I take, and then 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 take. Hmm. And just rook d8. Spent a lot of time. I mean, I'm already below five minutes after 11 moves, but I mean, it's, it's a position where every, every move basically I have to look at all the captures, concrete lines. Oh, traffic is up on Rosen score too. Ah, yeah. I began watching the Hikaru video on it, but I think it was like a video from one of his older streams on his extra channel. It was funny to see his reactions to some of the types of trophies. Okay, so white officially has a bishop pair, but I have the knight pair. And there's a lot of pressure against the pawn now. Three attackers. I mean, this is still an option, but the problem is this b7 pawn. So, I mean, b6 is maybe an idea, but also knight f5. I kind of like the idea of knight f5. The whole strategy is basically revolving around attacking white's biggest weakness. I see the comment from Miss Spiracy. Can you castle opposite sides and attack on the king side? End games are boring. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, um, I mean, generally, if you want to play good chess, you have to do what the position calls for. Of course, it can be more entertaining to play the sharper positions. But hopefully there's some level of satisfaction playing like a more dominant like positional game. 
If I can win the pawn, then hopefully it will lead to destroying White's King. Just have to take some baby steps. So if I take and then 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 wait a minute. Maybe, okay, maybe I take, take. I'm trying to figure out the right move order. I definitely want to take first. I'm debating which knight to take with. We are heading towards the end game though. Like minor pieces are about to be traded. Take, take, take here. My idea will be to play rook b8 in the end and win the b pawn and be up a pawn. Yeah, let's go for this. I could also, like, if takes, I could take with queen. And then we trade queens. But white has this move first and then take. And then take. I'll still have a choice. Yeah, because this game is maybe a bit more positional, a bit more strategic, I'll, I'll try and play a sharper opening next game. Um, wait a minute. Yeah, I guess uh, if queen takes queen, I'll have to take back with pawn. Because if I take with rook, there's bishop c5 with the skewer. Thank you, Scoopstar. Another first time prime. I saw a question earlier from Pathfinder asking, or saying, I love the Ponziani, but positions I get online are hindering over the board where people know theory. Basically asking for alternative openings. Yeah, there's a lot of different openings you can play in, like a double king's pawn is white. Maybe I'll try and get some this stream. Um, I mean, this move looks nice. I gotta up the tempo. I'm down two minutes. But up upon. Plan is probably to double up the rooks. Keep c7 defended. If I can somehow achieve knight d4 and c5, that would be nice. But not so easy. I mean, knight d4 doesn't work here. Mm. I'm thinking of this move. Oh, but then rook c1. And just queen e7. I want to make sure c7 is defended. So if white plays rook c1, I can safely move the knight. And really just looking to achieve... Uh, set up with c5. Okay, so play c5. This attacks a bishop and obstructs a queen from attacking the knight. White saves the bishop. I'm gonna play f6. Actually, I really should not be taking too long. Queen g5. Rook e1. Rook e8. Okay. I wasn't sure what to do there. Queen c7. f4 looks scary, but then I have knight c6. But I'm just trying to consolidate and get, a, get an easier position to play with low time. 
I don't mind the trade. Like takes, 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 takes. Question from Double B. If you played 100 games against a 2,000 rated player, how many do you think you'd win? I feel like there should be way, should be some way to actually check that on each chess. So I've definitely played 100 games against 2,000 rated opponents. Maybe not exactly, but I'm sure there's a way to find a rough estimate. Ooh, tricky. It's actually a good move. Uh, I might have to play f6. Not really what I want. Yeah, my knight's pinned and attacked now three times. If I play this, there's f4. I think what's going to happen is f4, I move the knight and white gets two rooks for the queen. Nice thing will be I'll have queen and knight, which is usually a good combination of pieces. Knight can maybe plant itself on d3. And then c4 and maybe help attack the king. We see this move. We'll offer a queen trade. If takes, I'll take with knight. If queen b5, I think queen c4 will force the trade. White's avoiding it. Okay, now knight d3. White's playing like good practical chess, like trying to keep the pressure, especially with the time situation. And this structure is actually nice in restricting the bishop. Like most of my pawns are on dark squares. Queen g6 probably coming. Happy New Year, Eric. Here's to 12 more months of good Happy memories, improvement, and of course, chess. Smile. Thank you, hijinks. Appreciate it. Yeah, I don't really mind this because I'm this. And the idea is to set up like some eventual knight f4, which I can't do right away because white takes with check. But after king h7, this is now a threat. This is probably a good move. Okay, here I can take the pawn. Now it looks like white's gonna crumble because the queen, the rook, and g2 are all targets. Queen f3, the queen will be overworked. Uh, this game went the full distance, both under 30 seconds. Thank you, compact car. Okay. Good game, though. I mean, why put up a fight? Got this IQP position, I said Queen's Pawn. Eventually won the pawn and then it took a long time to convert. White kept some pressure. Maybe F4 was a, a better option in this position. 
Black is still for choice. Got four knight to e3. Yeah, after takes, takes, takes. The queen and knight is still probably a better combo. Okay, moving on. Oh, Charma says, bit challenge. Berserk remaining games and win tournament for 2k bits. Is it worth trying? We'll see, depending on my opponents. An hour and 43 minutes left. I'm still looking to play a different opening every game. Jobava time. Jobava time. Sure, why not? I'll play Jobava London. Although this move order, it's better to play e4 rather than e3. And we're basically getting a line in the Pirates. Pirates perk. A lot of Americans say perk, but I think the C is pronounced differently. Uh, with C5, I can take. And then, I mean, trading queens and casting queenside with check looks pretty nice. Uh, using the D file. I mean, this, this, and then this. Wait a minute. There's a few options to consider here. Yeah, let's start with e5. And now this. I don't see how... Black is defending against this. I guess there's this move, but then this move. Unleashing the bishop. Takes doesn't really work because then I take, take, and then fork, and then skewer, and then trade, and then win the rook. Okay, <laughs> 10 move win. Joe Baba London success. Even though it wasn't really a true Joe Baba London, I'm still grateful for the one person who wanted me to play that opening. Got the berserking points. So trying to climb my way up to first. What opening to play next? I'll probably be black next game. Evans and Mora are both gambits for white. Thank you, Tempo, with a first time prime. Sharma wants a Stafford. Black Mardimo. Oh, Karo Khan? Okay. A few suggestions for Karo Khan. There's been a good number of people saying Owens, too. Oh, I'm white. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go for one of the suggested gambits, I guess. Oh, I forgot to... I forgot to berserk. Oops. What to do? <laughs> I played my first move too soon. But, okay, there's... What do I want to play against French? I'll play the two knights attack. I think there was one person earlier saying they like... The two knights against the French. But with b6, this is a little bit different. Um, yeah, this is more of an Owens now. I'll play d4, most principled. Bishop d3. And I think queen e2. Sometimes... Uh, White will play knight c3, but that really just walks into black's whole plan, bishop b4, to exert pressure here. I play queen e2 to ensure that I can play c3. But in this position, I mean, d5 actually looks like a candidate move. Because if takes, takes, it's check. I gain space. I don't lose a pawn. Oh, and here, I think white's winning a piece after d6. I guess after d6 and then takes, there's e5 takes, and then I take with pawn, maintaining the fork. I'm just grabbing more space here. If the bishop moves back... That'll be kind of sad for black. 
the E5, cementing my pawns. Yeah, so I'm I'm accepting double pawns to keep this pawn defended. I mean, assuming we see this move, I'll have minor piece for two pawns. Black will still have all eight pawns. C4 is a consideration. The problem with C4 is it gives away the D4 square eventually for Black's knight. There is a tricky move here. I'm going to play it. It's knight c3. There's a few tricks with this move. For one, if black does this, I have this. Okay, <laughs> so that worked out. I was also going to say that if d5, then it takes and bishop e4. So now I'm up a rook and bishop for two pawns. I'm just seeing the comment in chat. Maybe I could have taken with queen. That would have attacked the rook on eight. A very fair point. Let's go for queen f4 here. Offering the queen trade. If this, I can probably take. If that, I can't take anything, but... Go for this. Yeah, this was like a French turned into Owen's defense. E6, B6. Maybe someone that has followed Levy's recommendation from way back when. Okay, I'm getting pushed around a little bit. But as long as I don't lose anything or blunder mate, I'll have a, a decisive material advantage. Go for this. Trying to figure out my plan. Eventually push the H pawn. Might as well get the rook into the center. Yeah, at some point the bishop will probably move, like bishop f6, queen g3, and then I can start pushing. Or here I'll I'll make the bishop move. It's hard for black to get this move in without losing d5. Oh, b4 may be coming. Okay, prophylaxis. Question, why not castle queenside? I think my king would be more vulnerable here. Maybe a few moves ago it would be less clear, but black has more attacking potential on the queen side than in the center. But there's definitely cases where the king's not safe in the, in the center if the file were open. It's just hard for black to open the file. Speaking of opening files, the goal is to play this, open the h-file, eventually somehow checkmate. Maybe win the pawn there. Hmm. I'm going to play queen e3. Another kind of tricky move. It does allow this, which I am I would be happy to see. Simplify a little bit. I'm leaving this pawn hanging. But I'm more interested in this pawn, because now e pawn is pinned. If I can take here, this would be a pork. It's pin plus fork. Can I still play knight d5? Probably can. This is like an oh no my queen pork. Oh no my queen, but okay, I can win it right back. 
I could also consider taking and then taking, which is probably just not necessary. I saw the video on Hikaru's extra channel from yesterday where he like he came across a Rosen trophy of a smothered pork mate and he was trying to figure out what that was. And he just looked kind of disgusted. And this position is kind of disgusting, but it's a good kind of disgusting, if that makes sense. Disgusting in White's favor. A lot of things attacked. If queen d8, I can take the bishop with check and then win the d-pawn. Okay, here the queens have been traded. King is very safe on f2. And this is actually a fork. I kind of forgot I was attacking b5. Take the pawn. Yeah, maybe rook b8 was better. Oh no, my queen. Oh yes, my pork. I feel like I posted a YouTube video with that exact title. Maybe it's something else though. There was a phase where I, I was milking the pork content. Okay, this is another, this is just a fork. Take on c4, attacking the bishop. Also, yeah, the knight is on a, a forking, forking and porking spree. Although here I can't take, because idea would be to back rank, but the bishop controls d8. So I'll t attack the rook. And now, okay, I could win another pawn. I'm more interested in mating, but a pawn is a pawn. And I can re-enter the game via c6. And like here, I'm probably less interested in opening the H file. There's not much that this would accomplish. Like the goal is probably to get the rooks to the seventh or ideally to the eighth rank. Or maybe queen of pawn. Oh no, my knight. Oh yes, my Bordnik. What's up, Bordnik Chess? Thanks for the raid. If you're just joining, I just said, oh no, my knight. Shout out to Bordnik. Oh, oh no, I got skewered. Okay, this is fine though. Shout out to Bordnik. Hey, it's Nicola. Welcome back. Happy 58 months. Thanks for the bits. Yeah, if you're just joining, I'm playing the daily rapid. I'm trying to play a different opening every game. Um, trying to win efficiently in this game. I've lost count of how many times I've used this knight to fork things in this game. Okay. Yeah, someone brought up a good point that... I think it was this position I could have taken with the queen and then it would have hit the rook and then black would have three things hanging. I mean, this still worked out though. And then when I played knight c3, there was an idea that if d5, which looks natural, I would take, take, and bishop e4 to win more material. So let's move on. Yeah, Shwarma had earlier offered this challenge if I berserk the rest of the games. I I barely missed out berserking that last game. But maybe still in some contention to finish highly in the tournament.
I've been white three games in a row. See, some people want scotch. There are a, a bunch of people that wanted Karo Khan, um, but probably wanted me to play Karo Khan. Here I'm playing against a Karo Khan. Uh, playing the two knights attack, which I did make a video about way back when. It's an easy opening to learn. Might get some rapid development. Do you have to watch out for this move? Thank you, Inkful, getting merch. Inkful 4,372 purchase tone, no. My queen. Oh, yes. T-shirt for $24.95 and donated $3. I really appreciate that. In Rose and Connect 4. I could connect three in this position. Um, I have to keep in mind that I berserked here, so let's try and manage time. I'm avoiding the knight trade because these knights are overlapping each other. This is what we call superfluous knights. And in this case, yeah, this knight's restricted by the d pawn. With this structure, black could consider castling either way. But whichever way black castles, I'll have some attacking potential. Casting kingside, I'm already in good shape. Casting queenside, maybe I thrust my b-pawn. Thank you, I am Spooky Dookie with the first time prime. Welcome back to Joe Grun. Happy New Year. Shout out to Joe. Yeah, I'm going to put the bishop back. Oh, actually this pawn is hanging. Let's put the bishop back on b3. And if takes, I'll just castle. Try and get the d file. Yeah, that was a little bit careless, but... Okay. Accidental gambit against the Karo Khan. I'll play c c3 or rook d1. Yeah, rook d1 first. Because now the queen can't go back. Bishop e3. Calmly developing. I was going to say that there's a sneaky idea with the bishop e3, which is rook d4. And now Locke's queen is probably regretting its life decisions. And taking the pawn was probably fine earlier, but... It's wound up on a, a not-so-safe square. Entered the wrong neighborhood. Okay. Well, that ended abruptly. Um, let's see how bad or good this was, objectively. Okay, engine says it's a little bit preferable for black, but there's compensation. Like, if you're down the pawn and the engine just says, like, minus 0.2 or 3, then there's definitely counterplay. Let's keep it going. Fourth place. One point out of first. I'm still keeping an eye on chat, which opening to play next. Can I play the Karo Khan if we just had a Karo Khan? I think it'd be fine. Like, I'm, I'm playing a different opening every game from my perspective. I think it's fine to have a like the same opening but with different colors. Okay, playing black. All right, let's play. Let's play the Karo Khan. There's a lot of Karo Khan fans. I don't usually play the Karo Khan. Oh, I forgot to berserk again. Oops. Uh, sorry, Sharma. Karo Khan time. Ooh, two knights attack. So it feels like I'm playing against myself. Um. Oh, what's the line? I'm going to go for this. Takes and then knight f6, I think, is... Uh, it's like the main, main line. Knight g5. Knight g5. 
it's a trap if I play h6. Uh, there's lines where sometimes white will sack and then check, but I don't think it works there. Because there's no queen h5, I just move back. I hope I'm not locking into anything. I'm probably walking into something. Wow, what is this? But I have this move. I can't play bishop e6 because then I lose back the piece. e6 also looks playable. I'm actually really confused, but I'm also kind of scared. Like, here, here, and then here. At knight g6, rook somewhere. I feel like this is one of these like TikTok traps. It may be not good, but still dangerous. It's scary, like white's playing so quickly too, like barely using any time. But I mean, once I play e6, I have to stop the mate. There's also queen d4, which, which is kind of interesting. But e6 looks safer. Pawns defended. I'm up a knight for a pawn here. Thank you, Joe Price. The first time, Prime. Okay, this is a good sign. So, man, now I have time to try and consolidate. White is probably threatening this and then take. B5. Yeah, it's like a little bit uncomfortable, but it should be manageable. Looking for candidate moves, because if I play b5, I mean, there might just be this and then take. So I might want to over defend the pawn, like queen here. Hmm. There's also knight d5, which oh, which just plunders this move. Okay, not gonna play knight d5. Yeah, queen d6 looks fine. I guess the plan is to play knight d7. I spent a lot of time in the first few moves. Okay, d3 makes sense. Knight d7. Knight d7, knight g6, though. Hmm. Yeah, white still has some counterplay. Could play g5 here. g5, h4. I might have to make some concession. Let's go for g5. h4, rook g8. I mean, white does have some like longer term compensation. My pieces are not the best, uh, not on the best squares. If I play ninety seven, hmm. go for this. I can also go for this, but then F five, man.
Ideal to play b5. Hmm. I think I want to play b5 first. It gives me like one tempo, maybe c5, c4 at some point. Also, maybe a5 as well. Play rook g8. Happy New Year, Happy Eric. New Year, Stephen. And a big kind of part of working through this position is just identifying what white wants to do and how to stop it. I'm just trying to develop before my king gets too weak. Bishop e7 probably coming. So g5 stops the uh, bishop from coming to f4. Yeah, bishop e7. It's still kind of unsettling. Wow. I should not have allowed that. Because takes here, that's not good. Do I have this move? I'm in trouble here. Take there, there. Or wait a minute, no, I've... Oh no, king d8, knight f7. I'll still fight, but oh dear, maybe ninety no ninety seven still queen h five. I'm thinking about this. We have two, and then this, and then this, and then this. Might be my best chance. So white won back the piece. The whole idea of rook f6 was to get in queen h5, which, yeah, I should have. I don't know if I could have like prevented, though, because my knight was attacked and undefended. King h1. If I take queen h5, king d8. So the difference here is, I mean, with the queen on d6, there is this knight of 7 fork. But after this, this knight f7, I can run and then hopefully hide and then hopefully not flag and then hopefully checkmate. So I think white probably should have played rook f2 there. Super tricky game so far. Oh, my bishop and rook are attacked. I mean, I could take, take, and then here, and what's material? I'll, I'll be up a knight somehow. I'll also take this way. Maybe taking this way is better. Although, no, taking this way has a mate threat. Let's take this way. Okay, I think I can calm down. White's considering this move, which would be interesting. Yeah, I'm up a knight for a pawn again. But things are stabilizing. Bishop d2 is a good move. I have this move. Mm. Yeah, there's still weird compensation for white. A5, bishop c3, oh, bishop c3 is a threat, wow. Knight d7, I guess. It loses a pawn, but 
At least it defends the bishop. Down a lot of time. Yeah, this game's not over. I guess with um I have to calculate it though. Bishop e6, bishop e7, bishop a5, and then king here. Because I'll be attacking the queen and the bishop. Bishop b4, c5. The problem is queen f7. Hmm. I don't think I can afford... You just might be six. I just gotta play quicker. Have less than a minute. Maybe the king will find safety here. A4, B4. Yeah, so I'm losing the bishop, but basically forcing the bishop trade. If takes, takes, the bishop's defended. His line takes, takes, bishop f2, threatening mate, but then rook c7. And then likely knight g4. I take. That's insane if I can take. I think I can. The key is, yeah, this move, ensuring the king has no escape. And this is impossible to stop. Oh no, my queen. I mean, there's one spite check, maybe a couple spite checks, but it should be mate within like at least four or five moves. Or at most four or five moves. I'm not missing anything. Queen g8. Yeah, the natural line was to look for rook h8 first, but then the king would start running away. Yeah, and here, I mean, the only moves to delay mate all lose a queen. I think there's four in total. Or that, but... Okay. Okay. Oh, that's a relief to survive. Opponent, opponent was probably like in good shape at some point, especially, I mean, especially after rook f6. Walked into some tricky gambit. A lot of blunders this game from both of us. White was completely winning. I played like queen d4 check. So h6. So this is probably some opening prep. Like, has this been played before? It's been played 50,000 times before. I wonder if there's like a YouTube video or maybe book that recommends this. Objectively, it's not good, but maybe good, like good practical option for Blitzer Rapid or Bullet. Oh, E6 immediately. 
e6 maybe would have transposed. Was I thinking I could still castle? I think there's a point. I, I thought I could castle, or my plan was to castle queenside, forgetting that my king moved a couple of times. Oh, what's the difference? Knight e5. So this is the best line for black. Ah, the king can go to g8. Or it's less exploitable here, even though the bishop's here. I guess knight d5 coming. I'm already worse after queen d6. And then I was just losing. Yeah, bishop e7 was careless. Thank you, test name ignore, gifting five. Rook f2, only move to keep the advantage. I mean, the plan was to play bishop c5. Ah, white has knight g4 hey, to Eric, defend. How come you always make it look so easy? I don't think I made that game look easy. <laughs> that game was uh was really, really difficult. I mean, I should have lost. And towards the end, it was uh, it was nice though. Thank you. Uh, who was that? Hurler on the ditch. Also, thank you, test name ignore. Happy twenty six. Okay, yeah, the rest of the game was nice. It was nice to find this queen g three idea. Okay. Um, let's move on. Still over an hour left. Still in decent contention, if I can keep up the streak. So what new opening should I play next? A lot of people offering their suggestions. This is a little bit overwhelming, but... Alakine... Alakine could be fun. So if I'm white, looking for white openings, oop, oh, I'm black. So e4, I'll play an alakine. If d4, oh, if knight f3, well, this is already a new opening, regardless of what I do. Um, I'll play c5. Maybe we'll transpose into some Sicilian variation. d4, okay, this is... I don't think this is a good move. Another game I forgot to berserk. Not sure if Sharma is still here, but sorry. Um, yeah, because I have two center pawns. I, I could play e5 and d5. Maybe. I could start with this too. I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to punish this. e5, knight f3, then knight c6. Yeah, let's go for e5. There is a weird trap, like if knight b5, d5, then white can take on d5 and win a pawn, because if I take, there's knight c7, regaining the queen. Okay, so knight f3 attacking the pawn. Um, I don't actually have to defend because I do have queen a5, but I can't play d5 because then it allows white to take and then queen a5 doesn't win the knight. I mean, maybe I could consider this or knight c6. Play knight c6. I think this is like the most natural move. It does give white the chance to play e4, but then I can play knight f6 and keep developing. Yeah, this reminds me of the Ocali variation of the Sicilian, except I haven't committed to a6. I got this, this move in. 
Um, yeah, and I think the goal will just be to develop like very natural development, bishop g4, hopefully eventually. White's plan might be to play bishop g5 and use the d5 square for the knight. I could consider playing d5 here. But I'll hold off for now. Yeah, I'll just castle. Thank you, Gary. Gifting to Corrupted Cobra. H3, so preventing Bishop G4. Yeah, I'm just really, just really developing and following principles, trying not to overthink things. Thank you, Bag Risen. My rook c8. This is rapid chess, so playing more based on intuition. I mean, eventually d5 might be the break that I go for. The night before. Opponent offering the trade. There's a line here. I'm going to go for this. Bishop takes e3. If queen takes e3, there's a line takes, takes, and knight b4. Attacking the knight and the c-pawn. I guess the queen can defend. Then e4 could be vulnerable. If white takes on e6, I take on d2. Thank you, BLD Dream. Another first time prime. Oh, the last opening you played against was called the Alien Gambit. Oh, is this the opening that, is it named after Witty Alien? Someone was like talking about that the other day. And I didn't know what it was referring to. I'm glad I survived it. Trying to save humanity from aliens. Okay, so bishops are coming off the board. And white taking time here, but generally these positions you should just recapture and then think. Yeah, so here I'm looking at queen c7. The idea that after take, take, one of these pawns should fall. And we're simplifying. So ideally, I win a pawn. We trade queens. We get to an end game. It's a, a much different feel compared to the previous game. I should have considered knight takes e2 there. Yeah, and then like take and b5. But I saw one line which looks good enough. If the knight moves to try and defend, I still win a pawn. Knight d2. Can I take here? But then take. Doesn't work. Hmm. Maybe this first. Hey, it's Atusa. Thank you, Atusa. Appreciate the raid. If you're just joining, I'm trying to figure out how to win material here. Maybe Queen C5. Threatening. Just a something. small thanks for the game last night. Oh, thank you, Duke of KTM. Yeah, good game last night. Also, shout out to Atusa. Hope you had a good stream. For everyone tuning in, this is a daily rapid arena. Five minutes. Now less than five minutes and 55 seconds. 
So with this move, I'm defending the knight, trying to set up this uh, knight takes e4. Basically trying to take advantage of the fact that this knight is a little bit overworked. If a3, I can probably go for take and b5. Yeah, white's under, under some pressure here. If c3, there's knight d3. Have you streamed GeoGuessr in a while? I have not. I think my, my membership expired, so I have to like renew my membership so I can play ad-free. I also have to test it because I've been having PC issues with things lagging and slowing down. GeoGuessr takes some, uh, some more computer power than, than chess. But it's definitely something I'd like to, to do, hopefully sometime this year. It feels weird having a big time advantage. My last game, I was down five minutes on the clock. Or more. Thank you, Sir Bubbleton. Happy 25. Question, which opening was this? Yeah, this came from a weird move order, which I guess I can try and explain. Um, I mean, this isn't so crazy either. Idea 94. There's, I mean, there's moves to consider here. But taking, and taking is also interesting. Because if takes, I take on f2. But does that lead to anything? King d1. Maybe it doesn't. Taking on c2, b5, maybe 3 Yeah, really just trying to conserve the options. But, I mean, take, take, b5. 93, take, take, take looks good. There's take, take, b5, b4, but then queen goes back. Let's go for it. I guess if b4, the queen can also move forward, get the rook, unleash this rook. Rook c1. Am I still winning a pawn? Because takes, takes. Might still take work. Like queen d4. Or maybe I have, um, after rook c1, there's takes, takes, take on e4, takes and then d5. And then if queen takes e5, there's rook e1 with the pin. Otherwise I take and win back the piece. Yeah, um, okay, so we do see rook c1, let's take. The opening was a weird way to get like a Sicilian I guess if white wanted a Sicilian, they probably should have played e4 on move two. It just gave me the option to gain space early. I mean, queen takes is another option here. And then I'd like to move the queen over to obscure, but the problem is takes queen b6, queen takes c8, and that would not be good. So if I take, take, and then take, that wins a pawn. If takes, 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 also wins a pawn. 
It was F3, but then knight g3 hitting the rook. Okay. We're simplifying. And we do see F3. So I kind of like the move rook c8 as well. And there's options here. Knight g3, rook g1 most likely. There's a line d5, knight e5, rook e8, king f2. A point wants to draw. Now let's play rook c8. Because knight is basically pinned to c1. And if takes, knight take and I win the e pawn. I like how um, it saves a draw offer. It kind of makes it look like a question mark, though. Or it looks like a, a mistake. The question mark usually refers to a blunder. F3, half point question mark. I mean, white can play B3 to defend the knight, but then maybe I play this move, D5. And then take, and then take. Okay, so we trade. Yeah, white's going to threaten mate. And we'll play g5. Making Luft. Yeah, if I get the pawn to a4, then like this defends this, defends this, defends this, defends this. I'm three moves away from connect five. Not gonna happen though. Okay. Um, pretty smooth game. I mean, I tried to not overthink the, at least the development in the opening. I was taking time after the second move to try and figure out what to do. I mean, engine says, oh, engine says knight b5 is best. Yeah, there is this trap, d5 and then queen takes d5, which is actually, yeah, d5 is the most played move on Michas. And white's just winning a pawn here. I think I would have played d6. But then white's actually getting a, a decent version of some Sicilian. Okay, let's move on. Oh yeah, okay, Berserk incoming, hopefully, if I remember. Been suffering from some forgetfulness of Berserking, which is maybe a good thing. First place is paused. Okay. I'll play, play E4. Some people want scotch. We have a French, okay. What to play against the French. I'll play d4. Hopefully we don't have another Owens. Yeah, this time we have a, a Tarash French, which is an opening of my choosing. I played this. Actually, let's play this first. I played this when I was younger. It was one of the my main weapons growing up. Opponent going for a very close position. The usual plan is to put the knights like this. And I'll probably end up going for like g4, f5.
I mean, these moves don't really work because then g6 is vulnerable. So, I mean, it's a very kind of closed position. Black's playing on the queen side. I'm trying to play on the king side. Queen side castling is probably coming. I think I'll start with bishop e3. Just trying to connect the rooks and rook h1. And fight for the h-file. Thank you, TXLRM. Another first time prime. I do appreciate like all the people subbing with Prime for the first time. It does help the channel, easy way to support. For those that don't know, if, if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free. It takes a few clicks. You do have to remember every month to, to click, click. A long time watcher, first time caller, and first time subscriber too. Appreciate it. Wow, so we do see f5. So if I take and then, I mean, the knight can take. I play g5, knight e4. Hmm. Thinking knight g5 here, which is a temporary pawn sack sacking this pawn, but I'm also attacking these things. Hey, thank you, AKD, gifting 10. That's another way to support. Really appreciate it. So it might seem counterintuitive. I gave away a knight for a bishop in a closed position. Usually knights prefer closed positions. But with that trade, I opened f4 square, which will hopefully be valuable. I mean, here, I think I should start by taking. If knight takes, I'll trade off my bishop. And then I'll, yeah, I'm having a pass pawn on the square. Play that f4. And these pawns will now be long-term targets. Rooks are still having a staring contest. I'm trying not to blink. Whoa. Okay. I might be in trouble here. I was completely oblivious to this idea, this unleashing the bishop. Yeah, I'm in trouble. If take... Take there. So how bad is it? Looks pretty bad. I think I have to take. I'm the first to blink. I mean, after assuming takes back, takes this, this, takes, take. No, I can't take though. Like windy six maybe. Like maybe it's playable. Here, here. I think I have to go for it. It's not pretty. Queen d6. And this pawn is all up in my crib. But rookie one is coming. If we trade queens, the knight will be attacked. And then this pawn will be likely falling, which means this pawn could be falling, which means it might be okay for me. And this queen's not defended, so. Black doesn't have too many options here. I'm even thinking, like there's a line this, yeah, which we might, we might see. I can't take the knight because checkmate. But there's a line takes, takes, and then takes, and then takes, and then takes, and then move, and then take, then here. Maybe I just start with taking. Oh, 
I could play rookie one too. Simply trying to win the pawn. Yeah, I didn't go for this because I didn't want to lose g5. Or maybe I should have. Okay, so down some time. Now I can take. I, mean, I hit the rook and the pawn. A four check, I just take it. Not super fond of my king here because it's it's on a checkable square, the knight and bishop, but I'm trying to defend the pawn so I can move in the knight. If takes, 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 takes is a weird line. Okay, here I have e6. Oh no, let's stay awake. Almost plundered the pawn with check. I have this move. Offering the night trade. I'm down about five minutes on the clock. But I'm up a pawn. If we can simplify. Ooh, I forgot about that move. King h4 to defend. Rook here, king here. Just going for simplification. Wait a minute. I have to play this. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> I forgot that after this, there's this. I think it's okay, though. I have this and then this. And the king will walk in. Rookie eight is the only move. Oh, there's this move, though. Oof. This should still be winning. E8, take, take. King there. I think it's a winning endgame. If A4, I have to play this. This might be a... No, is this... Oh no, this is a draw. This is. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, now it's winning. We we transposed into the famous uh, Zamish. Was it Zamish Tarash? Endgame? There's a really famous endgame from the 1800s where I believe it's black to move and draw from this position. But now um, yeah, I'll win all the pawns. Yeah, this might be, this is probably in like a lot of endgame books. It's crazy that we reached what should be the same position. I'll have to show it after this game. Okay. Oh, just enough time there. That's so crazy. I, I think this final position is a draw. Even though it looks like I should just win the C-pawn. Um, let me see if I can find it. 
or if maybe someone in chat can find it. Samish against Tarash endgame. Oh, Chigorin, maybe. Ah, this one. Okay, I found it. So this endgame. White played g5. Well, actually, um, so it was Chigorin against Tarash. It wasn't Amish. And I guess White lost. So how similar was this? We just, if we flip the board, it's like the same position, right? Oh, that's kind of funny. Um, Cause I played King E5. That's so funny, it's the same position. And in this game, Although here it was other side to move. So white ended up losing here. So anyway, let me let me share the uh the key idea is I don't think it matters like who has a tempo. The idea to draw here is to play king oops king b5. Yeah. Let me hide any spoiler. So king b5. And after king d5, it looks like, okay, the c-pawn is a goner. Um, but black to move and draw. And the move is pawn b3. And whatever I do, like this or this, this doesn't work because um, like this, 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 um, yeah, should be a draw. So whatever pawn move is played, let's say a3, king a4. And whenever white will take the c-pawn, it's a draw. If white doesn't take the c-pawn, then king b5. So black manages, manages to draw this position with stalemate. But it's counterintuitive to like just move the king in like that. And the timing is important too, because because black has to play b3 first to close down the, the pawns. So that was very fortunate. Oh, but it's winning. Wait, how is it winning for white? Ah, I can play a4 first. Preventing the stalemate idea. Is that the only winning move? a4 or a3. Yeah, and the point is the pawns get closed down. Like if takes, takes, and the king tries to run this way, I have a4. Wow. So it's a very deceivingly tricky king-pawn ending, which if this were a classical game, I'd probably spend at least 10 minutes here to calculate the EA queen. I'd have to find the a-pawn push to prevent the stalemate idea but um yeah this this is a really important like classic end game to know as, as we see it can come up uh from other other games as well that was one of the the earliest missed stalemate traps i guess played in 1905 so early 1900s okay nice kind of Unexpected lesson there. Uh, for anyone that wants to to see the game, link is in the chat. Okay, 20 min 29 minutes left. He's working again. Um, I know a lot of people were asking for the Scotch game. We have a Karo Khan. I already played the two knights against the Karo Khan. So I'll play a, a classical variation. Knight c3 and take on e4 yeah this is like the old classical main line i played this line in qatar actually prepared it specifically for one of my opponents 
And I'll go for a line where I don't play h5, which I think is a bit more common, but rather just go for the early bishop trade. Bishop f4 and castle. Usually hard to go wrong with king b1, preemptively defending a2 in the event of queen a5. Now from here, I mean, one of the reasons for not having played h5 earlier when the bishop was on g6 is I have the potential break for g4, g5. And that's really the plan with knight e4. I am allowing black to take and gain time on the queen. Queen will drop back here. And then the plan would be to play knight e5 and push the g-pawn. Oh, goodbye, says Vush. Thanks for being here. So we're entering the final stretch of the tournament. Yeah, I mean, there might just be time for like one more game after this. But we'll see. A5. It's really tempting to just throw the g-pawn. There's also a move here, knight. This doesn't quite make sense, so. Hmm. I'm debating between rook g1. I really don't have time to think for too long. Let's go for this. I'm going all in. I'm preparing the kitchen sink attack. Throw the kitchen sink at my opponent. Queen e2. And there is some downside not having the rook on d1 aligned with the queen. But there's also upside having both rooks on the king side. Knight g4 slows me down. I'll go for this. I mean, attacking the knight twice. And really, the goal is to get rid of the knight so the pawn can push. I'm trying to figure out, like, if knight takes knight, if I should take with bishop or pawn. There's an argument for both. Both look attractive. Probably take with bishop. Because if f6, I move back and then e6 is hanging. Wow. Mm, I can take the knight. I'm not really seeing the idea for black. Okay, well now, I guess I, I understand the, the idea. Um, I do have knight d3 to defend. I have rook d1 first, which is maybe preferable. F2 is hanging, but really don't mind giving a pawn. And with most queen moves, I have knight d7. If queen b4, I can't play knight d7 because mate. Well, I have knight d3, defending and attacking. Yeah, I mean, after, after bishop f6, my knight was pinned and my bishop was pinned, but everything's defended. At some point, I would like to win h6. But the top priority is, yeah, harassing the queen. Yeah, queen g3 also, also probably would have worked. 
but it's nice being a bit more aggressive. So the rook really didn't serve a purpose on g1. But maybe it did bait black to take the pawn. I'm also realizing I could move the bishop. I, if I want to, I could even consider taking. Oh, but then, no, never mind. Bishop takes on, bishop takes on e5. Okay, knight d3. Defending, attacking. If queen b5, probably rook h e1. Or, yeah, maybe now it's time to take. Yeah, let's take. Black will probably try rook t8. And then, I think the plan is rook t8, bishop g5. And if takes, of course I don't take back because I get mated, but I take here first. And then I'm probably the one mating. I just realized my opponent's username, Mango Blunderson. A distant relative of Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, if I want to win the tournament, I need to get in at least two more games after this. Yeah, I just realized I'm allowing this move. It should be fine. I have, maybe have this, but I also can just move back. A nice thing here is if takes, I take with pawn and then keep the b2 pawn defended. And this trade is pretty much forced. Okay, very happy to open the h-file. Um, I'll go for g6. So if takes, then it's made in two. Take and then mate. And otherwise, I'm probably threatening to take in 95. I'm dreaming of rook h8, sack the rook, and get the queen in. Don't think that leads to mate, though. I could start with queen h5. Yeah, threatening maiden one. And if takes, I probably take back. Although I should calculate it takes queen h8, king f7, knight e5, king f6. And not seeing a follow up. It's winning, probably, but uh, this is simpler. Check. Okay, let's take on e6. Rook h8 is coming. So, nice Carol Khan. Um, I mean, developed naturally in the opening, prepared the attack. Opponent tried to slow it down, but then, yeah, I grabbed the pawn at the wrong moment. Probably had to take, but life was still good. So fourth place.
yeah, if I want to win, I have to berserk uh, the rest of the games. Still likely time for two more games to count. But no guarantee. Yeah, you can join the tournament. Um, this is an arena tournament, so players can join and leave whenever. Okay. Oh, playing first place. Ooh, double berserk. Okay. Uh, never played this opponent before. Do I go for a Stafford? I haven't played the Stafford yet today. Stafford Gambit time. But it's kind of risky. D4 is a fine move. I had this recently in Title Tuesday, like this exact position. Um, if I take... Can I play D6 here? Just offer the trades. So this game will definitely count for the tournament. Yeah, unlike a lot of positions in Stafford, this is very strategic positional, trying to just win the isolated queen's pawn. Knight here, take, take, there's knight b5. I think it's okay though. White gets a little bit of initiative. I'll have c6. Rookie one, king f8. Yeah, we went like straight from the opening to the end game. Pretty much no middle game there. The Stafford has a reputation to have, like get a lot of like crazy sharp positions, but also sometimes you get positions like this. I still have to be careful. So if knight d6, I move back. Not getting mated. Probably rook b8 and then develop the bishop is the plan. Bishop e6. Now the plan is to double up the rooks. Just trying to operate within my territory. Ah, knight c5 is a threat. b6. d7. Probably should go for b6 here. Yeah, it's worth restricting the knight. And now take. I think this is okay. I don't think white can afford to take here because f6 and rook h8 will trap the knight. Maybe like h6 and f5. Okay, trading off. And this is a classic ending. Outside passer. Should hopefully be winning. First restricting the knight.
Okay, opponent resigns. Maybe a strategic resignation because they fell out of first. Um, ending was winning, though. So... I mean, Grand, this Grandmaster 2050 is playing a game. And their game might not finish. It could, though. So, Berserking, and let's play... I haven't played, like, a true London yet. Let's play C4, though. Let's, um... Yeah, we'll keep mixing up the openings. And what do I want to play here? We're going to see a Grunfeld or King's Indian? Grunfeld. Oh, dear. Oh, what do I play against a Grunfeld? And it's different opening every game. I'll play this Bishop F4 line. I don't see five as a move. I think I'm supposed to take... I know this can get sharp. An A4, yeah. If I take, take. Rook C1, maybe. I think I just walked into some theory. I'm up a pawn, but I probably have to give it back. C6. C6 and king e2. Because queens are off the board, I probably want my king closer to the center. And there's a line takes, takes, takes rook d8. Do I keep this idea in mind? Definitely have a position to work with, though. Let's go for this. Get the bishop hair. Slightly damaged structure. If takes, I have a choice. If I take back, then this is possible. I would have this move. And this might be coming. Actually, bishop takes, I... Oh, no, I don't have rook t7. Okay, well, now I do have rook d7. Have to go for this. Takes, king d3. Bishop f6, maybe e4. A2 is defended. Threatening e5 now to not only disturb this, but also try and win this pawn. And e5 for black, I mean, hangs various things. Okay, so e5. Should I have e5 and then a4? Not quite trapping the knight.
I have an idea. Bishop a2, and then threatening bishop c1. Not simple, though. I'll go over this. If takes bishop c1, bishop c5, so the idea would be to just take here. I mean, black's pieces are not coordinated at all. Now this move looks like it traps a knight. I guess black was trying to set up this to trade rooks, but yeah, bishop e7 doesn't work. Now this game still might not finish before the end of the tournament, but we'll see. Um, A5 is coming, so let's play this. Yeah, Black's resisting. And still takes technique. Trying to figure out the plan here. Bishop e3. Bishop should probably go to e4. Prevented rook c2. Okay, centralized bishops. Yeah, it's hard for black to advance the pawns. <clears throat> One plan might be to Okay, provoke this and then go for bishop e8. Although, just trying to calculate. Yeah, that should be fine. Yeah, it's calculating this, 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 and then. Either rook or bishop takes. Probably bishop takes. B2, take with check. King moves somewhere and then this. And rook a2, it's fine. King f8 runs into this. I guess if rook a2, I just play this. B4, start with this. A5, bishop f7 yeah it doesn't look like this game will count for the tournament people sad yeah have to speak the language of twitch chat okay so we see this move Ah, so now black goes for this. The difference now is with a the thing there. Oh, wait a minute. I really have to be careful. Oh, there's a few differences. I have to start with this. Eey. Let me start with take and then this. 
I was going to say that there is some idea to win the rook, but Black also has ideas of checking and promoting. Now with b2, I play king g2. And everything should be okay. And now, yeah, the threat is to check and take. Maybe I could have started with this, because this is mate. I need to win this in 10 seconds. <laughs> the opponent has over three minutes, though. So. Okay. Not happening. So now it's just a matter of trying to clean up. And there's bishop f7, or bishop takes g6 coming. This might be more efficient. And then I, I go for bishop h6 and just mate. I'm also watching the square. Okay, cleaning up all the pawns. If takes, I pin. Yeah, if I didn't have a rook, this would be a pretty easy draw for black. But having a rook makes life a bit easier. Is this made in two? No, it's not made in two. Bishop moves its mates, but yeah, the king can move. Okay. Well, that's the tournament. In three rating points for that game. Managed to stay clean. This final game I played into an opening I've had no theoretical knowledge of. The only thing I knew about this opening is that there was a Kramnik game. Kramnik came up with some like knight g5 in one of the main lines. Uh, if we go to Masters database. Yeah, Kramnik against Ivanchuk. Or no. Well, there's a game... Kramnik's played this a lot, but maybe it's another line. Maybe it's like this, rook c1, and then dc4. Yeah. I don't think I would have remembered this. But there's a cool idea somewhere around this position, like queen a5, h3, bishop f5. Like, knight g5 is a key move. Kramnik Morosevich. And then the idea is to, like, somehow take. And then queen b3. It was a very brief period of time I was, like, trying to learn how to play against Grunfeld. Anyway, um, I made four blunder while I was losing. What? Oh, I could have got forked. I missed a backwards knight move. But I was losing at multiple moments. So that was the first moment. Rook d7 was a very bad move. And then this was very bad because black can move back. Wow. Look at this move. That's kind of hard to... Hard to find. Also hard to like wrap your mind around that. This move threatens like two unstoppable forks. Arguably three. The main threats are knight c5 and knight b2. To win either the rook or the bishop. Knight b2 would win the bishop because these squares are off limits. The king can't stay defending the bishop. So take this is winning. And if I move my king to not walk into this or this, then there's this fork again. Wow. So knight a4, knights on the rim are... Sometimes not so grim. 
threatening. I mean, it's a backward knight move to threaten a couple of backward knight forks and the Fian Kato knight fork. Yeah, I don't blame my opponent for missing that. And King d3 looks so natural too. And then there is another moment. It's funny, there is three missed moves in a row. So black played this, it's back to equal. And again, knight a4. So this was missed a couple of times. As, yeah, when I played e4, I thought I was in very good shape, but knight a4, it's a nice puzzle. Like just to thread the fork, or thread the forks, which are just impossible to deal with. Okay, well, that was a fun tournament. We're about three, or no, we're about two and a half hours into the stream. Um, I late joined the tournament like a few minutes late, but I pretty much played the whole thing. Ended up finishing fourth overall. Congratulations to Grandmaster2850. Winning the tournament. Um, I gained a few rating points. I gained nine points. So I guess I'll, I'll finish the stream with a puzzle storm. Uh, yesterday I scored 73. My high score is 79. And yeah, the, the stream will end when the hype train ends, I guess. So thank you, Johnny Rocket, keeping it going. Another first time prime. Okay. So Puzzle Storm is very similar to Puzzle Rush. Um, you just have to solve puzzles. But if I get one wrong, I get penalized with less time. If I get a combo, I get more time. So it usually starts easy and gets a bit more difficult. Thank you, Camille Zucchini. Okay, what to do? I can take a rook, promote a pawn, take a bishop, take a knight, skewer, check, check, queen. Gotta be queen here. What's up, player? What's up? Thank you, Urban Pancake. Bishop. Wait. What is this? Bishop e3? This is a fork. So I'm close to promoting. Probably queen here. I understand queen b1 also looks good. So what's the defense for white? I can also queen. Maybe just queening. Okay. Oh, you, you, you. Ah. I couldn't stop myself. That was, that was a really careless mistake. Uh, okay, let's try and speed this up, be accurate. Okay, almost mouse slipped there. Uh, rook e1, no, let's do this. Take, lift a rook. Skewer, take here, push. Uh, I'm in check here. Have 
to play this in eight. Ah, this is bishop e3. F3. This move. The knight's hanging. Made in two. Queen here, probably. Wait, what? I don't know what I did there. Do! Oh no, my time. Okay. I crumbled towards the end, got to 57. Yeah, it hurts getting the final ones wrong. So here, I played this. Ah, taking's not right. I guess I have to... What is this one? B2? Oh, it's B2. And then, yeah, if rook here, it would be rook A1. Uh, this one... I think I played queen h3. But I'm just supposed to take... And then check. Wait a minute. There's also this check. Probably this check. And then this. And then this one... I kind of just gave up at the end. This one, Chaz is welcome to help as well. Not immediately seeing it. Maybe queen, could be queen c2. Queen c2, bishop c3, bishop b5. Oh, queen h1. Okay, good job, chat. That was not on my radar. Queen h1 is a nice idea. Maiden 3. Well done. Oops. Where is it? Okay. I'll give that a thumbs up. Was there any other? I think there was one more. Yeah. So this one and then this one. With this one, I played queen g2. I should just take the rook. It was a brain malfunction. And then this one. Yeah, I played this thinking this this is mate, but there's bishop e3. So. Wait, I guess I can start with this and then bishop e1. No? Ah, it's just bishop d4 and then queen d1. Okay. Okay. Well, that will sum it up. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. I do appreciate it.